So as usual, I rode some racehorses before my lesson, and then I headed to my lesson. It was a really cold and foggy morning, but it was really pretty out. Most of the horses were pretty sharp. This chestnut mare named Z here spooked at Marcus the dog, and you can see her go speeding forward. And then the bay is named Winnie, and she was pretty good. So before this, I was trying to get him to walk on a loose rein and stretch down and trotting on a loose rein and stretching down and he was pretty good for that and that was part of our warm up and then now we're just starting to try to get him to go into the bridle on a shorter rein and just working on that. We're working on getting a better quality trot and consistency in the bridle because he pops in and out of the bridle just trying to figure it out, especially during warm up. So we're just working on consistency and trying to keep the bend around the corners and working on keeping my shoulder up because I have a tendency to drop my inside shoulder, especially around corners. We're trying to get him to get a longer stride without speeding up, so I'm pushing him forward down the long sides and trying to get him to open up his stride without doing more strides down the long side. So we just want him to have a longer stride and start stretching out and lifting his back and bringing his bum underneath of him better. And then she doesn't want me going all the way around the arena without changing what we're doing so we do transitions or circling or different exercises just to keep him busy. And then coming out of the corner I'm adding leg and trying to get him to lengthen again and using the corners to get him to soften and stretch into the bridle and just get a better quality trot. Sometimes he does these big moves with his head when I ask him to soften and he's just kind of overreacting to the aid and then I give him lots and encourage him to stretch out once again. So here we're circling once again and it's a spiral circle so I'm pushing him into a smaller and smaller circle and then eventually I'll work on pushing him back out and this just helps him be responsive to leg aids and helps with softening and getting him to use himself properly. So I've moved him back out onto a bigger circle and we're going to go down the long wall again. This is a better quality trot, we still want him to lengthen a bit more so I have to slow my posting and push him forward into the bridle and try to get him to stretch out without increasing his stride frequency. Coming out of the corner, I'm going to start the first loop of a serpentine and the purpose of this is to get him bending and then going straight across the arena before changing the bend and going the other way and doing another loop of the serpentine. She wants me to move my upper body back and up and then push him over onto the new inside aid so that he goes onto the rail and then we're going to go around this turn and go down the long side. And then around the corner I'm reminded not to drop my shoulder again and then going down this long wall we're trying to get a bigger trot from him so we're asking him for more to open up his stride and increase the length of his trot. He thought about breaking to canter for a second but he was overall responsive to my aids and moved his trot out and I'm just trying to push him into my hands and not worry about his head as much so if he comes above the bridle it's not a huge deal we just want to to respond to the leg and eventually relax back down into the bridle. So we're going to circle him again up at this end and it's going to be a spiral circle where we're pushing him into a smaller circle and then back out onto a larger circle and this is just to get him responding to my inside and outside leg and coming into the circle and out of the circle as I ask and this helps get him under himself and softening. Generally he has a harder time bending to the left so this is his harder direction for getting a good inside bend. So now we're pushing him out onto a larger circle and I'm trying to get him to hold the bend with less rein and more leg but since this is his harder direction he has a harder time doing that. So when I take away the inside rein aid he tends to want to stop bending to the inside.
We're gonna come up the quarter line again and I'm gonna ask him for a leg yield back onto the rail and he's been pretty responsive to these but he does pop out of the bridle and we're still trying to get that consistency. Around the corners we're asking him for a good bend to prepare him to come up the next quarter line. And I came off the quarter line too quickly with the leg yield this time. I should have kept him going straighter for longer. So now we're going around this next corner and then I'm transitioning to walk because I'm going to pull off his quarter sheet because he is warmed up and then we're going to start doing some other stuff. And he also needs to poo. Now we're working on canter and I have a tendency to hold too much with my inside rein instead of using my outside rein to balance. So I need to work on softening the inside rein so that he stays straight down the long sides and is only bending on the corners. So once again I'm getting him to bend around the corners and soften to prepare him for the long sides. And then down the long side I'm pushing him into the bridle with my leg and trying to get him to go into the bridle forward and then relax and soften. And then I'm just being reminded to make sure that I use leg when I'm asking for my half halts to push him into the bridle and then softening. And if he does not soften with me, then we ask him again and then soften and give him the chance to do what I'm asking and soften. I have a tendency to roll my wrist. It's a bad habit I've developed, so I'm just being reminded not to do that. And then we're gonna circle up here at the canter. And now we're spiraling down into a smaller circle at the canter and the left rein is his harder rein, so he doesn't like to bend as much. So this is harder for him. I need to push him forward so he doesn't lose impulsion even though he's going in a smaller circle. And then we're trying to get him to continue the bend with leg and less rein. So she need to push him and ask for more canter because he's kind of losing it and not using himself as correctly. And then now that he knows where we're going and that I want him inside bending on the circle, she wants me to use my outside aids to push him in and try to start using less inside aids for him. So that's what we're working on introducing to him. Milo thinks that this whole left lead canter business on a small circle is very, very hard. So he has a lot of trouble being consistent in the bridle with me, but that's okay, he'll get there. And then down the long wall, my trainer is reminding me to use more inside leg to encourage him to engage that inside hind leg. And we're just trying to get him to move out and lengthen his stride down the long wall. And if he starts to stargaze too much, then I resist with my hand and push forward with my leg to ask him to soften and come back down into the bridle. And I like using my corners for this to encourage that bend and soften him for the long wall. And we're changing rain across the half of the arena and we were going to try to get him to hold the counter canter. But being the smart guy he is, he anticipates a simple change and swaps the lead and then we just carry on and give him the benefit of the doubt because he was doing technically the right thing. And now we're doing a spiral circle again. When he's on a bigger circle, we're asking him for less bend and then as it gets smaller, we want more bend from him. As the circle gets wound down, he tends to lose impulsion, so we're trying to push him forward and keep a quality canter even on the smaller circle. So now we're going back down the long wall on the quarter line at the canter and I'm going to ask him for a leg yield. Usually at the canter, the first time I ask him, he's not as responsive. So he doesn't go onto the rail quite when I wanted him to, but he still responded to the leg yield. And when he starts to curl too much with his head, I need to lift my hands and soften. And we're going to go up the quarter line again and ask him for a leg yield and then when he hits the rail I soften with my hands just by slightly opening my fingers and giving him a little bit of rain or pushing my hands forward. And I'm going to circle him up at this end on a large circle and then I'm going to push him forward and ask for a bigger canter, a medium canter. And then I bring him back down to a working canter by closing my hands and using my seat. We're going to come back down the quarter line and I'm going to leg yield him back onto the rail and then soften. And then around the corner I'm going to cut across the middle of the arena and I'm going to ask him to change directions but we're going to try to hold the counter canter. 
and this one was pretty difficult because he likes to anticipate the lead change there. So as you can see, he swapped his front, so we're bringing him back down to trot and we're gonna fix that. So I'm sending him forward and asking him for a bit of a bigger canter down the long wall and then I'm sitting back and asking him to soften for the corners and start to shorten his stride and come into the bridle. Then down this long side she wants me to soften with my inside rein and then I half halt going into the corner and soften. Then we're going to transition to trot halfway down this long side and for my transitions she wants me to ride them like a leg yield and push him into his outside shoulder. And now she wants me to push my inside hand forward and give a little bit but hold with the outside and push him into the bridle and we're trying to get a bigger trot down this long wall. And I have a tendency to hold too much with my inside rein and not enough with my outside so she's reminding me to be there with my outside rein because that's the one that guides him and tells him where his head needs to be and how far forward we want his nose out and so on. Down this long wall and around this corner is a much better quality trot. I really like how he looks here. He's not doing the big movements with his head or coming up above the bridle as much. And at this point in the ride is generally when he gets a lot softer, but he still doesn't really have the strength to consistently hold. So he does pop in and out of the bridle, but it's getting better and better the stronger he gets. So we're coming down the quarter line yet again and doing another leg yield and she's telling me to watch my rhythm and slow my posting and make sure he does not get too fast. Through this corner I'm asking him for a good bend and then as we come out of the corner I'm softening and once again getting reminded not to hold too much with my inside rein and to make sure that it's my outside rein that's being the guiding rein. Then down this long wall I'm adding leg and asking him to lengthen yet again. She's asking me to stretch up and back with my upper body a bit and then soften with my inside rein. I really like how he's going here. He was really soft and he was feeling really good at this point. This is a nice trot down this long side. She's telling me to use my outside rein as the guide, telling him when to go back into the bridle or where to stretch to and use my inside leg to keep him on the rail and keep him straight. Down this long wall we're just trying to keep him engaged and soft. When he pops up with his head I give him a little reminder and then he relaxes back down pretty quickly. I'm really pleased with how he looks here. He was really really good in this lesson. So he's really nice and soft coming into this corner and then coming out of the corner I'm going to ask him for a canter and we're going to carry on down the long side and then do a short turn around these cavalettis and ask him to change direction but hold that counter canter. This exercise is really good for helping him understand counter canter along with ensuring that he doesn't anticipate simple changes or flying changes. And then I transition to trot before the corner and we're going to do a simple change to canter for that direction. This canter transition wasn't forward enough for my trainer's liking. We want him to have more energy and more impulsion going into his transitions. So coming down this long side, she wants more energy at the canter, so I'm trying to push him forward and ask him to lengthen the stride without increasing the frequency of the strides. And then going into the corner, we're asking him to soften and start to shorten his stride around the corner. And then I'm going to cut across the arena to do the counter canter exercise that we just did in the other direction. This is not his good direction for this exercise because he anticipates a change and often tries to do that without me asking, but this time he listened and held the counter canter. And then before the corner, we ask him to trot and we're going to change leads. Down this long wall, I'm going to soften when he gives to me and then I'll ask him again when he pops above the bridle and soften when he responds to that. And then we're going to try to carry that softness through the corner and head back up this long wall where we'll do a trot transition. He popped way above the bridle for this trot transition. It wasn't as good, but yet again she does want me to leg yield him into the aids to try and push him into that shoulder and keep him soft. So now we're trying to get him to soften again and regain his rhythm and consistency after his transition. So I'm being told to slow my posting and soften with my hands when he does and check him if he needs a reminder. 
And now my trainer is just telling me how as he gets more experienced, I'll start to lift my hands more. But since he's green, we're keeping them lower right now. But now that he is warmed up, he does have a tendency to want to drop too low and start to curl. So we're trying to encourage him not to do that and to continue carrying himself in a little bit of a higher frame. So we carried the softness down that long wall and then through this corner I'm going to ask him to walk and that is the end of my lesson because my mom got on him for the last 15 minutes of it. So all in all, I'm really happy with how that lesson went. I notice a big difference in how he's going at the start of it compared to how he goes at the end. He's getting a lot more consistent in the bridle and starting to carry himself a lot better. And the fitter he gets and the more muscle he builds, the better it gets. And also his new bit is working wonders for him. He really seems to like it. So I'm really happy with him. He's come such a long way from where we started. And he is still super green, which I think a lot of people forget. He broke as a three-year-old, which was in spring of 2015. So it wasn't that long ago and he also typically gets most of the winter off due to the snow and I've also given him huge breaks in between works and whatnot and he really only started being in a full five to six day a week program this year. Last year he was ridden three to four days a week so um, it's only really now that we're expecting more of him and starting to treat him like an adult and asking more of him so he's come along really quickly with that in mind.